My name is Father Peter Jankowski. I am a priest from the Diocese of Joliet, Illinois. Joliet is about 30 minutes southwest of Chicago. I have been asked to talk about basic subjects, about signs, symbols, rituals. What does it mean to offer liturgical prayer versus private prayer? What it means to uh, consume the body of Christ, the real presence? talk about the Liturgy of the Word, Liturgy of the Eucharist at Mass, and things of that nature. We're going to supplement these talks with very brief articles that I will write. Hopefully this will give you a good introduction on what liturgy is about and where we are going to go from here. The first subject I want to talk about today is called Signs, Symbols, and Rituals because these basic things that we do in life the secular things that we do in life are very much reflected in what we do in our liturgical life. So for instance, you will notice that my cell phone has just gone off after my one minute introduction, which essentially says it's time for me to stop talking about my introduction. This cell phone is a sign. It points to one specific thing, this alarm, that it is time to stop. It is time to be alert. We have many signs, symbols, and rituals in our own secular life. An alarm clock is a sign. It points to one reality. A watch tells us the time. That is a sign. A symbol talks about something that has more than one meaning. So for instance, if we have a picture of our family, a picture of a trip, a good book, some good piece of literature, these kind of things point to many different types of realities. A ritual takes these signs and symbols, puts them together in a manner that is comfortable for us. So for instance, in the morning, having an alarm clock, brushing our teeth, using the facilities, taking a bath or taking a shower, eating breakfast, what we have for breakfast, the time we go to work, the time we leave work. All these things are rituals in our life and they become customary, they become comfortable to us and they give us a structure or a formation in how we should live. The church has these same types of signs, symbols and rituals in which we are invested in our daily life as well. For instance, every day we wake up, we make the sign of the cross which points to one specific reality, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word Amen, I believe, something that is very important to us. A crucifix which points to one reality, the death of our Lord. A symbol is something that's uh, a little bit more expanded on its meaning. So for instance, a station of the cross, the picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe, an image that is painted on our stained glass windows. Did you know that in the early church before people were able to read or have access to reading in the 15th century, stained glass windows were often used to depict stories of the church's life. And if you looked at the stained glass window, depending on your interpretation or your sits in Laban, your situation in life, you'd look at these windows and it would uh, communicate with you a different type of story. It would communicate different to me than it would communicate to someone else. That's what stories are for. Stories are to uh, stir up our imagination, stir up uh, the, the manner in which God communicates with us. We call that condescension, a language in which God can communicate with us so that we understand. And so we take these signs, these symbols, and these rituals, and we put them together in our prayer life, in our ritual life. Have you ever been to a wedding where the couple exchanges vows exchanges rings, they offer a lighting of a unity candle. These different signs, symbols, and rituals are all put together in a pattern that we understand in the liturgy. We have a liturgy of the Word where we read scripture and the liturgy of the Eucharist where we celebrate the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. And so these liturgical parts of the Mass 
are taken from these Jewish customs where the Jewish folks would go to the synagogue to read sacred scripture and then they would go home to their houses and they'd celebrate a sacred meal. And this Passover meal is what Jesus uses as the foundation for his Last Supper, where Jesus tells his apostles, do this in memory of me. And so Jesus takes these liturgical customs from the Jewish faith. He puts them together into what we call a liturgy, a mass, a sacrifice, where we take the readings from scripture, we take the meal from God, we bring them together, and we have a foundation on how we should live our life. The church calls the mass the source and summit of our Christian life. And so what we're doing today is we are going to talk about these various signs, symbols, and rituals and how we use them in the church. Hopefully what we're doing is not going to be too complicated, it's going to be very accessible, and it's very much going to teach us about how the church wishes to communicate us with us, both in word and in prayer and in our daily life. May God bless all of you. Thank you for watching this video.